Hello everyone, welcome to the Tea Crane. I'm Tia Solsen and today I am ready for another Tea Club tasting. Um, so subscribers of my um, Tea Club, the Tea Crane Tea Club, which is available uh, for subscription online at the Tea Crane, um, have received the January package and I'm going to look at the teas that I've uh, supplied in that Tea Club subscription package for January. Um, very exciting, I think everyone has received their teas by now and so I'm really happy that we can taste these teas together, that I give some additional information or give some information about the information that I have provided in the package in my uh, newsletter, my uh, Tea Club letter that I always give in these uh, these Tea Clubs. I, especially for this year, for the, the coming months, I've um, focused on a more educational approach. Um, for this month, the January Tea Club, I chose two teas that are very similar. They're both Sencha, they're from the Yabukita variation, and they're grown by the same producer in the same area. But, although they look so similar, they are so different. Um, first of all, they're both from the Yabukita cultivar, but one is from the Yabukita cultivar, grown from the cultivar, from the, uh, from the cuttings, as is common with reproducing cultivars. However, the other one is produced from seeds from that same cultivar, and so that, of course, if you grow tea bushes from seed as opposed to from cuttings, they will lose a lot of their similarity to the mother plant and they, it is said that they revert to their ancestral state and each plant is again individual. Um, the big difference between seed grown and uh, cultivar species is cultivars are exact clones. Imagine that I would be a cultivar, then there would be ten exactly the same of me here. Strange maybe. Um, but what happens with seeds is what happens with children from the same parents, for example. You have two parents who make ten children. None of them is going to be the same. Each child has its own characteristics, individual traits and specifications. And that's the same with tea bushes when they grow from seed. So that is already a big difference. Now, although they're produced by the same producer and in the same region, the tea garden is not exactly the same place. Um, they're a bit distant from in another and so each tea has its different uh, area and also different soil composition. So the soil composition, composition again affects the outcome of the flavor of the tea and that is very visible in these teas because they are grown absolutely naturally. They've almost received no fertilization. They're, they have to rely on the environment and a little bit of the environmental support that the, so that the producer gives, but no additional uh, nourishment, no um, human-made fertilizers, etc., etc. Everything natural. So the soil affects the outcome of the flavor very clearly. So, that being said, that is what I'm going to do in this video and i um, really happy that I can share this information with you. If you are watching and you haven't subscribed to my tea club, check out the link in the description below. You can go and find out more about the tea club, what I do, what this is, but you can also watch this video. You'll get a very good idea of what this tea club uh, entails. And from the link in the description below, you can subscribe to that tea club to get these delicious and very interesting teas delivered to you every month. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, is subscribe now. Also click the bell so you get notified of new videos that come out and I, I will be very happy to continue sharing these um, videos about tea, videos about tea ceremony, my approach to tea. There, there's a lot of things that I can share about tea and I will also be doing so on this channel. So I hope you subscribe and uh, also want to see you in upcoming videos in the future. So that being said, let's dive straight in 
Um, I'm going to go with the first T. I'll also follow my notes. Um, so the T club always comes with this letter, and the first one on the letter is the yep, the seed grown spring. Up. So let me show you. Um, first, I have a, a little letter. Uh, just this time, I said best wishes for a fabulous new year. So uh, a little bit of uh, seasonal greetings, some information about what's going to come. Uh, I also mentioned that also this one is a, a little bit of an educational uh, package. Next month and the, the month to come, I've also uh, looked at a more educational package, which we can use to learn more about different types of tea and different approaches to making Japanese tea. And then what I've done with this one, and I like this a lot, is to give a lot of information about the tea. So giving a lot of information about the tea might, might be confusing because why do I need to know when this tea was harvested? Or how, why do I need to know how old this tea bush was? See, um, what would be the difference between 40 years to 57 years old? Uh, maybe there's not that much difference, but it gives, what I think is having this information gives a deeper approach and a deeper understanding of what you are consuming like, for example, when you're talking to a person, if, um, if you're talking to someone on the phone and you don't know who he is or what he looks like, or it's, it's very difficult to tell um, or have a, have a more personal feeling towards uh, the, the other person on the, on the phone, as opposed to when you are talking to someone in real life, in person, then that person, you, you will see he's, he's about, well, he's around 40, he's in his 40s, he, oh, he looks like he, he likes baseball, because um, he's wearing his baseball cap. And, um, so you get a bit more affinity with this person, and you also look for an approach, or look for similarities that you can, uh, that, you, that you have in common with each other, and that you can maybe later, at a later stage, talk about, or enjoy together. So you become more personal, you become more interested, you grow a greater affinity for this person. And I think it's the same with tea. If you get a vision of who the producer is, then you get a feeling for how he might have produced this tea. And that will also reflect, of course, the producer is the biggest influence on how the tea is going to taste because it's in his hands, harvesting, deciding when to harvest, how to harvest how to produce his tea, how long to steam it, or how long to pan fire it, then how long to roll it for, etc, etc. All these things are in his hands, and his character, his ideas, his motivation affects the tea that you will be drinking. So knowing about the person, knowing about what tea bush it's from, um, is it fertilized, is it not fertilized? Uh, if it's fertilized, you will know that you're going to be expecting some fertilization in the flavor. If it's not fertilized, then you know that you can rely on um, the environment and then you will also want to know about what that environment was like. And that's what I have all these notes for. For example, the, the first tea that we're going to enjoy is um, the seed grown spring harvest. So I've got the seed grown one and the not uh, seed grown one. They're harvested around the same time. and. You can see very clearly, if you look at these um, two leaves, that the, the cultivar one is, the leaf is a little smaller, it's, um, it's also darker in color, and the not cultivar one, the seed grown one, you can see it is very, um, the leaf is larger, almost a bit coarser, although it's also uh, harvested very early on in May, so, um, and here we have three days. Uh, Oh yes, I, re I remember, because the, the producer mentioned in his notes that uh, he had three dates for this tea because the farm is uh, located on a sloping f uh, surface. The tea bushes on the farm begin to sprout at a slightly different interval. So the bushes highest of the slope sprout first, followed by the bushes in the center, and then the lower end of the slope. Therefore, the farmer has divided the harvest of this particular farm over three days at a two-day interval to allow the bushes uh, to develop at a similar degree and have, when harvested, an, um, well, a similar type of tea. So if you, far if you harvest the entire farm, you have smaller leaf, larger leaf, um, and 
the, the development of the, the, the leaves on that farm is going to be different. So it's a very interesting feature that you get from looking at these notes, looking at this information. So uh, another thing that might be interesting to mention is, of course, the I mentioned about the difference in soil composition. So uh, if we look at the two T's here, um, the seed grown one was grown in a mixture of granite and loamy soil. Uh, it's the geological features mentioned that it's a magmatic rock on the Japan Median Tectonic Line. The Cenozoic era is about six million years ago. That's from when Lake Biwa, the big Biwa lake that is um, in Shiga Prefecture, it's uh, just next to Kyoto. That one uh, was in the region where these tea fields are now. And so the tea field of the Yabukita cultivar one was growing on a place where the Biwa Lake was. And so that makes the Biwa Lake, um, the, the soil of that farm, an, uh, a clay soil inclusive of round pebbles. So the round pebbles, they roll into the lake from the rivers that brought on the water that was supplying the Biwa Lake. And the clay soil is, of course, because, well, the the, the bottom of the lake is, is, is a very heavy clay soil. And opposed to that, we've got the Yabukita seed-grown cultivar. That one was grown on the, well, on a soil that's from the Mesozoic area, which is about 10 million years ago. That is a magmatic rock on the Japan Median Tectonic Line. Uh, it doesn't say much, of course, I think, to a lot of you, but it's a, it's a very old sort of um, volcanic structure uh, on which basically Japan was built. Uh, and that has a mixture of granite and loamy soil. That's a, that's a more airy soil. It's got granite in there. Um, so it's, um, it's a soil that is fresher, lighter. Um, also allows water and nourishment to flow through more easily. So what we get from this distinction is that a clay soil to begin with is dense. It maintains a lot of, um, of items, things, and it doesn't really release anything as easily. So a lot of the nourishment and the water in the soil is maintained better in a clay soil. And you might think that is good for a tea bush to grow on, but a tea bush growing on clay soil makes it very difficult to also extend its roots and to really find where all the nourishment is. Whereas in an, um, a more loamy or a more airy, a more um, sand-like soil, the nourishment and the water flows through more freely and so also more easily reaches the roots. So the, in a clay soil it's, it's more difficult for a bush actually to, um, to survive. But if it does survive, there is a lot of nourishment that the tea bush can get from the clay soil and so it will also become much more rich flavor, a richly nourished uh, tea bush, as opposed to, for example, now take a, an, uh, a sand soil, a very loose beach-like sand soil, that something that you find a lot um, on the, uh, the sides of the rivers, for example. Um, that releases a lot of the nourishment very quickly, and the nourishment is, especially with heavy rainfalls, just washed away. It's gone to waste. And so the bushes growing on a soil like that, they tend to get less uh, nourishment and they tend to be more, uh, well, lighter in flavor. Right, well, I think it's interesting to look at this. It's interesting to talk about these um, specifications. I've also got a uh, chart and um, a cultivar chart talking about the cultivar itself 
about the Yabukita when it was produced, when it was made, discovered, etc. Um, well, I could go on and on and on, but then this video would also take forever. Um, but if you have the tea, if you're receiving the tea club, I'm very grateful for you doing so. Really happy that I um, can share these teas, and it's great actually that I have also been able to <coughs> show you a bit of the differences and the, the reason, basically behind why I chose these um, these two teas and I wanted to compare them. Then I, there's a, a lot more information on these pages, so have a look at it. Um, brew them, see which differences you get out of them, and of course you're always free to contact me, ask me questions about them, um, send me an email or uh, make a comment, and we can also if you'd like um, set up an, a one-on-one -on -one, uh, activity where we can taste these teas together uh, for example we can do that over zoom or online um, so if you're interested in, in doing something like that and we can talk more about these teas as well so uh, that being said feel free to reach out feel free to uh, contact me with any questions or, or requests that you might have and I will be looking forward to sharing more interesting teas, more interesting tea information with you next month. And um, for the time being, enjoy these teas and see you soon.